Hey everybody, welcome to Broadway.com's Live at Five. It is Monday, June 24th, and I am Ryan Lee Gilbert. And I'm Andy Lefkowitz. And we are joined, as usual, by the fantastic Caitlin Moynihan. Hello. Look at that. Pretty girl. Uh, <laughs> we are also joined by one of our absolute favorites around yes, here. We yes. have the iconic... That's Julie Halston here from Tootsie. Yes. <laughs> Very excited to talk to Julie about Tootsie and her career and so much more. But first, let's talk about today's top five. We have lost all chill over this news. Some sad news we're going to start off with that came yes. in late last week. Uh, we found out that Be More Chill is going to play its final performance at the Lyceum Theater on Broadway on August 11th. Um, mm -hmm. As we all know, Be More Chill has had this incredible path to yeah. Broadway, mm -hmm. starting off in New Jersey a few years ago and making its way to Pershing Square Signature Theater last fall and eventually opening on Broadway. Um, it had a pretty solid run here, and it won four Broadway.com Audience Choice Awards. It did. So yes, it did. Yeah. And got a Tony nomination for Joe Iconis in his Broadway songwriting debut. But, so, yeah, yeah, certainly one of those powered by the people, powered by the certainly. fan shows that went all the way, you know, from its humble beginnings to being on Broadway, which is yeah. absolutely incredible. And some amazing performances oh in that goodness, show. Oh, my goodness. Great totally. music. Yeah, so yeah. you have until August 11th to go check it out. There you go. And we have some other sad news to announce, but we are able to honor his legacy through his work. Yeah, uh, sadly, we have a double dose of sad news today. Uh, William F. Brown, who is best known for writing the libretto to The Wiz, uh, passed away on June 23rd yesterday. He was uh, 91. He passed away in Westport, Connecticut, according to his longtime wife and collaborator, Tina Tippett. Um, uh, yeah, besides writing The Wiz, of course, um, he made his Broadway debut with his play The Girl in the Freudian Slip, which opened at the Booth Theater in May, on May 18th in 1967. The show only ran for four performances, but it was the first adult Broadway performance from Bernadette Peters, yeah. which is super fascinating, right? Uh, William F. Brown will, of course, be uh, remembered by his friends and family and all the incredible fans of his work as well. And we have casting for this previ previously announced uh, New York City Center show, and it's very exciting. Yes. I'm very excited about encores. this. So yes. I love encores. encores, but I especially love Encores Off Center because mm -hmm. I think people should know more about Off Broadway, which has such a rich history. I think Jim um, Austin would agree with Right? That. <laughs> so something that's cool about Encores Off Center is they bring back shows that have appeared off Broadway and they give them a full production with a full orchestra mm -hmm. and an incredible cast. So this production is Stephen Sondheim's most recent musical, Roadshow, which appeared at the Public Theater in 2008. So this production is going to, the cast is ridiculous. It's crazy. Raul Esparza, Brendan Uranowitz, Chuck Cooper, Mary Beth Peel, and Jin Ha are Why? the leads. Then an incredible ensemble. Yeah. So uh, this is a show about the Meisner brothers, and it's a true story about two brothers who inherit a small fortune at the turn of the 20th century and grab their piece of the American dream in a, in a country where anything seems possible. So this is going to run at New York City Center from July 24th to 27th. So don't miss it. Yeah, I can't wait for this. Yes. And this is the Broadway comic book crossover that we didn't know we needed until we got it. Yeah, you have to assume it was only going to be a matter of time be <laughs> between, you know, before Marvel got involved in this industry as well. So here is what's happening. Christian Borel is among a talented group of authors who are going to participate in launching Marvel Spotlight. And basically, this is going to be stage plays that are inspired by some of people's favorites Marvel comic books. Um, so including, uh, uh, in, alongside Christian Borel, will also be Macy Asher and Karen Zacharias will be participating in this. And it will star iconic superheroes Ms. Marvel. Marvel, Squirrel Girl, and Thor. Uh, the plays explore universal challenges facing 21st century young adults, including self-image, understanding vulnerability, adjusting to change, and the importance of responsibility and being true to oneself. Uh, Christian Borrow's play, Hammered, a Thor and Loki play, finds a teenage Thor and Loki competing for the favor of their parents through Asgardian rites of passage. Wow. I don't know if you know any of what I've just said there, but you know, if you follow <laughs> the Marvel movies, you'll at least be. Do you have any idea what I just I don't, but I know Christian Borel. <laughs> <It's super laughs> 
<laughs> I don't follow comics. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, it's so a Sarah's play Mirror of Most Value is a Ms. Marvel play, and Zacharias' Squirrel Girl Goes to College, a wow. Squirrel Girl play. Love so, it. So, yeah, you know, if these are two of your interests and your loves, get ready, because this collaboration, man. Totally. So exciting. something that I think is cool about this is, so Christian Burrell penned this play. Yep. Now, we all know him from his incredible work as an actor on Two-time Broadway. Tony winner. Yeah, yeah but right now he's directing a show at the Muni, right. and now he's writing this new play. So it's kind of cool yeah. to see actors, you know, kind of put on other hats, and Absolutely. I feel like a lot of people in our industry do that. So it's neat to see uh, when that happens. Totally agree. Can't yeah. wait. I'm going to check these out. Yeah. Indeed. Yes, definitely. And this news houses wanting to board the Hogwarts Express more than ever. Yeah, so this is pretty cool. We have a new vlogger at Broadway.com. James Snyder, who plays Ooh, Harry Potter woo-hoo. and Harry Potter and the Cursed yes, Child, yes. is going to take the Broadway.com camera into the Lyric Theater and show you everything yes. that he can. James Snyder um, loves to vlog yeah, for us. Vlog totally. number two for yeah, James Snyder. Then, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And he's hey, such kid. a great dude. Yes. Really, really nice, talented guy. And people have been wanting for us to have a vlog at Harry yes. Potter and the Cursed Child for a very for long, really time. long time. And we've been working on it for a very long time. <laughs> yeah. So it's great to see this finally come together. Yeah, so it's going to kick off on July 4th and we'll show up on the site every Thursday for eight weeks. Absolutely. Wow. There's some other great things that you can check out on our site right now. Lindsay Sullivan interviewed Patrick Vale from the Tony-winning uh, Oklahoma. So we did a fresh face on him, which you can read and watch right now. Uh, Shalina Kennedy came here and filmed. You g- 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 grasp your I chest. I <laughs> literally like put my hands on my heart. She sounds. She sounds, sounds incredible. incredible. She is leading the national incredible. tour of the band's visit, and she came here and she sang Omar Sharif. It's absolutely it's phenomenal. Oh, check so that good. out. Um, and we. We did a Q&A with West End Mamma Mia star Maz Murray. So you can check all of that on our site right now, but don't click away yet because we're just about to talk to Julie Halston. Caitlin, would you tell us a little bit about today's guest? Gladly. Yes, we have the Julie Halston here with us in the studio today. She's currently in Tootsie on Broadway as Rita Marshall. This uh, Tootsie, as you know, got nominated for 11 Tonys and took home, uh, Santina Fontana took home one, Robert Horn, the book writer, took home one. Um, this is not Miss Halston's first time on Broadway. Uh, right. She's been seen in On the Town, Anything Goes, Gypsy, Hairspray, so much more. She has so much wisdom to tell us. You may have seen her on screen in Sex in the City, The Class, The Battery's Down, and again, a whole lot more. Please follow her on social media, especially on Instagram, at actress Julie Halston, and on Twitter, just... Julie Halston. Follow her on both. Leave all of your questions in the comments below. And please welcome Julie and Ryan. Hello. Hello. It's Hello. very Hello. nice to be here. Hello. Hello. We're so Hello. excited. That excited whole Marvel here. segment. <laughs> I don't know what country <laughs> I was no, in. No, no, I knew. I was gonna, as soon as I was, girl. As soon I, as I was reading the title, I was like, no, what, who knows what wow. this means? As guardian rites of passage. But that's yes. okay. But you know, there, an audience for everything. Isn't Absolutely. that right? Absolutely. Um, as This is your ninth Broadway show, Julie Halston. Oh, oh. That's phenomenal. Thank well, you. I think what's phenomenal is that I've been in so <laughs> many musicals yes. considering I, I I really can't sing with dance. <laughs> well, um, we don't agree. But but thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm thrilled and Tootsie is so much fun. I mean, as you guys know, mm-hmm. it did win the best book. It did. Robert Horn's book. Robert Absolutely. Horn's book is phenomenal and it is laugh out loud funny and audiences literally stop the show I would say about four different times mm-hmm. because it is that funny. Yeah. And, you know, that's not a phenomenon that you come across easily, particularly in a musical. So I, I have to say I'm just thrilled. And my character, Rita Marshall, uh, the producer <laughs> yes. who hires yes. Dorothy Michaels. Juliet's Curse. Juliet's <laughs> Curse. And, um, <laughs> So I get to wear the most fantastic wig in the world. You do. You, and, your, and your costumes are out of this world. William Ooh, Ivy Long. Yes. They're literally, just, women yeah. have stopped me on the street, and they're like, how do I get that gold suit you're wearing at the end? And you I'm like, can't. well, you too <laughs> can pay William Ivy Long thousands yeah, of dollars. To go dig through the Dolce & Gabbana. Exactly. Like. Vintage. Um, but as a friend of mine said, um, your wig appears five minutes before you do. That's how big it is. <laughs> it's just and platinum. It's yeah. fantastic. <laughs> it is. So I'm having the time of my I life. Bet. The the cast is truly phenomenal. When Robert gave his acceptance speech on the Tonys, and he said it is a, 
you know, a clown car of, of comedians, and he wasn't wrong. John Bellman, Andy Grolution, Sarah Stiles, you know, Santino, Lily Cooper, Lily yeah. Cooper uh, Reg Rogers, yeah. Mike McGraw. I mean, this is just nuts. Absolutely. So, um, so we're anyway we're having the time of our lives well, and you can tell from the audio I saw the show uh, the day Tony nominations came out so there was uh, obviously this energy yes. in the theater already but you can tell like you're all just having such a blast up there you um you did not audition for Tootsie this this role there, this was we need a Julie Halston type let's just get Julie Halston yeah <laughs> yeah and that and has to be it, it a... is fantastic and you know well as I like to say well you know when you get old enough you know people go well you know, I, is Elaine Stritch still with us? Oh, no, but all right, Julie Halston is. Give it to her. Um, and what was so amazing is that uh, Scott Ellis called me up. Uh, I was sort of sitting on my couch, uh, and he was like, hey, I don't know what this is. We don't even know what this character is yet. Mm -hmm. We're not sure what we're doing. Do you want to just come in? I feel bad that I'm just sort of asking you to come in and read Without this and blah, blah. And I was like, no, for Scott, I'll do anything. I mean, I did You Can't Take It With You with Scott Ellis. Absolutely. And the stair climb I got yeah, to do I in know, that, that show. Your performance in that was absolutely hysterical. Well, it was Scott <laughs> allowing me the freedom to explore. And I was like, I'll do anything for you, Scott. So I walked in and I met people. I knew Santino, but I didn't know mm -hmm. a lot of people. And... Um, we started reading, and I didn't know who Robert Horn was, but I could see this guy, like, <laughs> over there, mm -hmm. I guess, you know. And every time I opened my mouth, he was laughing. Oh, there's no better And I was that. like, and I thought, <laughs> well, whoever he is, I don't care if he's a serial killer. He's going to vouch for me. I, I, I like the man. I like the guy. I don't care if he killed his mother. I like him. Uh, and then finally, at the end of the day, somebody said, well, that's the book writer. That's the book writer. And he came up to me and took my hand and he said, I'm writing Rena Marshall for you. And mm. I, I will never forget it because Scott pulled me aside and he said, so you want to do this, huh? You want to be in the show? You yeah. want to do it? Yeah. And it was really, I, I can't tell you, it was a, a, an incredible walk home. I just was so grateful and delighted because I knew it was going to be good. I knew Santino was going to be amazing. And I was just delighted to to be Rita Marshall. Yeah, no, so. absolutely. When you first saw, I'm ima I imagine you had seen the film before yes. you. So, did, was there a part of you that could sort of relate to the the journey, at least you know, that Michael Dorsey slash Dorothy Michaels goes on in terms of, I'm like desperate to be a working oh, actor. Oh, please! And, I right? mean, absolutely. I mean, I. Uh, one of the things that a lot of actors love to do is sit around and talk about, you know, <laughs> well, what was your most humiliating thing? <laughs> well, what, what was your most humiliating thing? And, of course, what's a scream is that, you know, it, it might have been yesterday. <laughs> right, do, do you right. know what I mean? Sure. Uh, it's not like it just ends, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and um, uh, Charles and I talk about that a lot, too. Charles Bush. Charles Bush. Well, of course, yes. Because um, when we had our theater company... Uh, in the in the eighties, mm -hmm. um, theater in limbo. So yeah, we could all identify with Michael Dorsey and his you know desperate attempts yeah. to work. And right. you know he is a talented actor, mm -hmm. but as we say in the opening number, he may be as good as Gil Good, but you're not going to see that name on the marquee because he's also kind of difficult and sure, he's always yeah. questioning things. And his motto is better is better. Mm -hmm. But we also know that the business is tough. Yeah. And it's a, it's a tough business. I know many, many talented people who I don't think have gotten the opportunity. Sure, that right. They, yeah. That they sh maybe should have. But it's also, dare we quote Sondheim, like there's another hundred people getting off of, you know, I mean, Absolutely. this is a business that people want to be in. You know, if I was someone's mother, I'd be like, Anything but show business. <laughs> but but I also understand it. It's when you are in show business and if you are talented, you should at least give yourself the shot. Right. And you, sir, I know like you've spoken growing up, you were like as a kid, you were like a wallflower. When did when did you know you loved performing? When did the, it's sort of that idea? Well, um, I think my mom, uh, my mom loved show business, and she was actually a very good dancer, uh, ball, ballroom type dancing, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but um, 
she loved the theater, she loved movies, whatnot. And uh, she would talk a lot about it, but um, my other sisters did not get the bug. But You're the middle I'm child. the middle child. You know, uh, desperate d- for attention. Ditto, yeah. It's very, it's very sad. You end up in front of cameras. Yes, it's very sad. <laughs> um, but uh, I think it was around nine or ten. Uh, um, I, I started thinking about like, well, maybe because I was very shy, mm-hmm. and that's also a, a big, a real stereotype. Sure. Yeah. But I think it was really when my mom, because she really tried to encouraged me to have more friends and get out mm-hmm. there in the world. She enrolled me, uh, I guess I was around 13 or so, in um, before high school, okay. uh, like, a, like a summer acting, <laughs> you know, right. kind of workshop thing, thing, you know, yeah. campy okay. thing, you know, right. kind of thing. And I was like, oh, I'm in. I love it. <laughs> I love all these people. We're doing no. these crazy exercises. And um, I just loved it. And... Uh, you know, I think that was it. I was just like, well, I'm hooked. I'm, that's yeah. it. And also we had, uh, my mom would always buy all the um, albums, you know. We had Funny Girl and sure, Hello yeah. Jolly and uh, My Fair Lady and, you know. So we were, you know, and we, I was one of those people. And, I, and then when I finally did get enough confidence, then I became, unfortunately, I became like a little dictator. I was like, <laughs> well, now that I know what acting is all about, I'm going to make the whole neighborhood... <laughs> to my bidding. Yes, come and perform I, with me. Yes, yes, and I was pro- producing, directing, and performing in shows. Rita and, Marshall and was in your blood. Absolutely, <laughs> in my garage. And those poor neighborhood kids, I mean, they were just browbeaten to death. You know? you know, and I was just like, no, you have to sing it again with more feeling. <laughs> and it was, it was sad. But anyway, that was me. Yeah, do you remember, I mean, you are just, you're absolutely hysterical. And one of my favorite things to do during Tootsie was, not that you were drawing my attention away from, but just to watch you in the background, just the way you're sort of living in the space, like when you're mouthing the words (laughs) to to the audition song and all that. Do you remember the first time you made a group of people, an audience, just laugh? Was there something where where you knew, like, oh, I can do that, and I want to keep doing that? Well, interesting that you bring this up. Uh, uh, I was, I do remember in third grade, because I was really dorky and, you know, <laughs> didn't have a lot of friends. There was a girl, and I actually, I actually found her picture not too long ago. I think her name was Judy King. Okay. And, uh, you know, sh- she was not particularly bright, not particularly <laughs> attractive, really. She was hilarious. Okay. And she was kind of, a, she was a smart aleck. Mm-hmm. She was a smart aleck. And she was very popular. And I thought, I got I to gotta open my mouth more, you know. Well, of course, I just got into trouble. I was, <laughs> but, but I do remember a couple of times making some friends laugh. Mm-hmm. And I was really young. And I thought, well, that's really interesting. And then I remember around 9, 10, 11, around that time, I made my uncle laugh because I was, he said something to me and I said, says you says you, and he, I don't know why, but he started laughing, and he talked to my mom, and he was like, you gotta watch her, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. and, and I thought, uh, this is kind of a power. You, you, totally, you, you, you yeah, know? yeah, absolutely. And then by the time I did that summer campy mm-hmm. thing, I was starting to make people laugh, because again, it was a sort of fearlessness, because comedy is a, a sort of fearless absolutely. endeavor. Absolutely, yeah. Um, it gave me more and more confidence sure and people laughing and you know it also becomes a a popularity kind of thing it's like oh people want to be around you and whatnot and um by that point by the time i entered teenage dumb i was like i'm on board with this this is it yeah this is it now all i need to do is put blonde streaks in my hair (laughs) And wear some lipstick, and I'm done. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm done. And then, of course, I took that years later when I met Charles Bush. Well, and yeah, I want to talk. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, the '80s with, with a theater in limbo and all of your collaborations with Charles Bush. What what did that experience teach you about you as a performer, or you know how you approached this work? Like, what, what do you what do you think was the the biggest lesson you took? from those years creating that, what became le- now legendary theater with Charles Bush? Well, 
I mean, it is not an overstatement to say that I kind of learned everything. Yeah. I really yeah. did. Uh, from my years working with Charles Bush, our director, Ken Elliott, uh, the company of Theater in Limbo. Um, Charles was the person who really encouraged me to keep going further. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he kept saying to me, you know, you keep trying to smooth out your persona mm. to be like the nice lady, mm -hmm. you know? And I'm writing all these, you know, really dramatic, you know, kind of diva-esque, you yeah, know, Joan yeah. Crawford and, you know, people with big opinions. <laughs> right. And, you know, and, and they might be bitchy. <laughs> um, uh, and he was the one who said, cultivate this. Mm -hmm. And do you know, I, um, well, I, I have to say, I, I, I'm a little friendly with Jim Parsons, mm -hmm. the wonderful Absolutely. Jim Parsons, who Absolutely. I just saw at a, a, a Tony party. Mm -hmm. And he cited Charles Bush and our theater company as a very big influence I on can him. I can see that. And yeah, I no, was totally. so moved by that. And he used to come and see our shows. Yeah. So I was really blown away. But it was really Charles and Ken and the whole company who really kept encouraging me to go further and further. And you know, you can always pull back. Right. But right. you can't always, you know, get bigger. And but also to understand that, you know, strong, interesting uh, women who have big opinions mm -hmm. and uh, want to do things their way, that's an interesting Absolutely. persona, you know. Yeah, totally. Being little Miss Milk Toast is maybe not going to do it. <laughs> so um, <laughs> I was really, really uh, grateful to the theater company. And it was also Charles Bush who said, you know, you should do your own act. Right. And yeah. I was like, oh, God, you know, really? <laughs> you know, Sounds that, like a lot of work. It's a lot of work. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Right, I, I, right. I, I'm just enjoying a cocktail, you know, <laughs> after our performance. And he was the one who said, no, 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 you really, you, you, you tell very funny stories in the dressing room. You should write some of these down. So. And I mean, that took you all over the country. I it mean, did. Yeah, absolutely. But here's the wild thing. He made dates for me at the Club 88s down in the village <laughs> without my knowledge. And he was like, well, I booked you. Now you have to show up and do it. <laughs> yes. And I was like, really? What am I going to do? And he said, just call your mother. <laughs> and I did. Yeah, yeah. And I called my mother. And my mother was one of those women, you know. She just she had opinions about everything. And uh, I would just call her and I'd say, Mom, you know, what do you think of this? You know, and she'd mm -hmm. just go off. And I would just be on the phone and I'd just be writing down everything she <laughs> just said. Just transcribing and everything. And it's transcribing, you know. Um, you know, That's she great, saw but, Hamilton yeah. at the age of 92. I'll mm -hmm. never forget it. Uh, she, I guess she saw Lin-Manuel on, you know, Michael and Kelly sure, or something. And sure. she was like, he seems charming. <laughs> and uh, I, I, can you just get me house seats? I was like, sure, Ma. Oh, yeah, okay, <laughs> Ma. And, uh, well, I drew it. But um, anyway, I said, now, Mom, what did you think of um, Hamilton, you know, after I saw her? She says, well, it's not cats. <laughs> But no, this is the quote, and it's unbelievable. <laughs> the stagecraft was magnificent. First of all, my mother is a housewife yes. from Comac, Long Island, 92 years old. She was talking about the stagecraft I of I Hamilton. <laughs> and she was taken care of by the house management mm -hmm. and all this kind of stuff. Sam Rudy, the PR person, made sure she was taken care of. I asked my brother-in-law and my sister who their favorite characters were or whatever, and I said to mom, well, mom, who was your favorite character in Hamilton? And she went, Tim Petalino, the house manager. <laughs> It's like, wow. Wow. It was a big experience. It's fantastic. <laughs> Unbelievable. You know, that's, so, that's anyway. amazing. Before, we, uh, before the, we run out of any time, I want to make sure yes. we get some questions in from the people that are watching for Julie. Yes. Okay, so Alec wants to know, how do you guys not break on stage when Santino does his comedy? And how do, do you guys, what do you guys do if you need to break? What's it like? Um, honestly, there have been times when we kind of do break. <laughs> 
So I literally, and I'm not joking, I'm not the only one, we bite the inside of right. our mm -hmm. mouths yeah. and we've all developed <laughs> like horrible raw. raw. <laughs> um, and there have been times when I've said something or looked at him and he looks at me like he'll just be like, as Dorothy, you know, <laughs> and I just have to literally kind of look away because I can't. I just can't. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, Absolutely. Totally. Um, so and but what's so wonderful is that we're all in this together mm -hmm. and we all sort of know how to cover for each sure. other. Oh, yeah. And Santino is also, you know, we've had mishaps where, for example, like the the um, the set didn't come on correctly okay. or whatever. A few times we've had to stop the show mm -hmm. and Santino literally will go out and talk to the audience. Well, of course the audience <laughs> yeah. just goes crazy. Sure. Mm -hmm. He's like doing 20 minutes out there. It's like, okay, Santino. It we, actually, we have to get back to Yeah, the yeah, actually now. everything's been fixed. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, but I have to tell you, if Please. you don't mind me no. do, doing this, it's yours. Um, Rita Marshall, you know, is the producer that I play. But I wanted to tell your audience yeah. that on June 28th, Julie Halston and my friend Glenn Krutop are actually producing an industry reading. Well, please, <gasps> please. yes. Um, so feel free to come. Uh, it's at the Peter J. Sharp Theater on Absolutely. Theater Row. Yep. It's called the Effing Wright Brothers. Okay. okay, fantastic. And Gordon Greenberg directed it. Do oh, we fantastic. know Gordon Greenberg? Absolutely. Absolutely. Jay Armstrong Johnson is in. Oh, I mean, we, I'm telling you, we have an amazing cast. Love bug. It is about children's theater. I think I've said it all. <laughs> I think I, I've said I'm it all. Sold. You're yes. sold. Okay. Yes. June 28th. June 28th. Three o'clock. Yes. Okay. It's so fun. And I am so proud to be able to be like, I play a producer. And now I am a now, producer. Now, you know what? That's heaven sent. I mean, sense. isn't that? There you go. It's kind of fantastic. It is. But it I is. won't be wearing the wig. Okay. Yeah, All yeah, right. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know what? You don't. We, we still love you. And make what? sure you go see Tootsie at the Marquee Theater. It is Tootsie. truly, you will never, ever regret it. It's such, a, it's such a blast having you. Thank you so much for coming I'm by. I'm delighted. It was fantastic. Please come back and see us anytime. Caitlin, why don't you take us out? Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at 5 every single weekday here on Facebook. And you can listen to us where we get your podcast by searching for hashtag live at 5 and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in tomorrow when we talk to Mallory Portnoy of the Tony winning revival of Oklahoma.